Welcome to a special presentation of Sellout Crowd, Conversations with Coach. I'm Bob Stoops. I'm taking time to talk with my friends and colleagues in the sports world to get caught up and share stories. But first, I want to say thanks to these sponsors, Rose Hill Builders, First Fidelity Bank, and Louis Bar & Grill. Today, I'm joined by one of my former favorite players and a three-time Super Bowl champion, Blake Bell, the legend, the belldozer from from Oklahoma, from Oklahoma. Blake, welcome to the show. I appreciate you helping me out today. Hey, I appreciate you having me on. Well, listen, I, I'm, I'm a little roughed up today. I've just got out of practice, so I, I'm sporting the Arlington Renegades gear. I'm going to brag. I got to see my trophy up there in the corner, the XFL trophy. So, uh, so anyway, it's been a lot of fun. But, uh, well, Mike, you've had quite the ride. Let's go all the way back to you playing at, at uh, Bishop Carroll High School where we recruited you in Wichita. And uh, great drop back quarterback, of course, and uh, son to uh, Mark and Sherry. Now, I might, and I'll tell you, everyone might, might not know, your dad, Mark, played in the NFL for a long time. And then your uncle, Mike, played for the Chiefs for a long time. Talk about their careers. Yeah, it's, it's special. You know, obviously having my dad and uncle around, being able to support me and, and coaching us growing up. Um, you know, I still I was telling someone the other day, we have a picture um, in my parents' basement. It's of me, my brother, and some of our buddies when we we're probably fourth or fifth grade. And we were there with uh, Tony Gonzalez. So it's like, <laughs> I mean, how life comes full circle. And obviously Mike playing there 12 years and getting to go down on the field and watching the guys run out of Arrowhead uh, Tunnel. And uh, it's been special. And all of a sudden I'm sitting here with three Super Bowl rings with the Chiefs. It's uh, it's surreal. That is so awesome. And, uh, you know, going back to Bishop Carroll recruiting you, and I know your your family have uh, been Sooner fans ever since. And, you know, let's talk about your journey. You come to OU. It's it's 2010, um, right? You're redshirted. Yep. Right? And then, but 2009, you're also, you or 10, you were drafted by uh, Detroit Tigers out of high school. Do I, is yep. that right? The, yeah, I, I think it was I, late, late round. Detroit. <laughs> what position would it have been? Uh, pitcher. Yeah. I just ended up pitching. I stopped hitting and stuff. Um, but then I, you know, I was going to all these quarterback camps and then I'm trying to go to these pitching camps. So I started throwing the football, like the baseball and vice versa. So I was like, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta stop and pick one here. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good. You know, I forgot about, I, I remember that happening. And, uh, but anyway, so you come to OU 2010, uh, you, you red shirt the first year, of course, Landry Jones, as you know, and, has had a, even a long NFL career as a, as a quarterback, but but also has all the records at OU throwing the football. So, but you know, I, I always appreciated the team player you were, the the guy you were in the locker room, your parents never calling me, you know, because <laughs> because Landry, you know, continued to do so well. But in 2011 and 12, we found something really special with you in the belldozer package. And I know Landry didn't like it. He didn't like coming off the floor. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Did he ever I, tell you that? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, every time I'd see him, we'd always joke around about it. I'm like, you know, he'd be running off the field. I'm running on, and I could just see it in his eyes. But, you know, I'm like, I know the competitor he was. Uh, yeah. I don't want to hate that, but he's a, he's a team guy, and, and I still say to this day, if you just watched him throw the football, man, he could spin it. Oh, he was special, and I – I love him, and uh, he was with me here in 2020 with the Renegades. But uh, right. but anyway, I remember one time too. We had you throw the ball, and he was really mad. He he, <laughs> he came to me, so I said, "Listen, you better just know your place here." But uh, uh, well, you had 13 touchdowns in uh, 2011, I think it was right. 13 yeah. touchdowns. You're the inside bowl MVP. How about that with with three touchdowns? Landry really didn't like that one. <laughs> no, <laughs> then, he definitely didn't. Yeah, but then you're 2012. You've got a ton of TDs as as well. Um, I, what do I think? 11 TDs, two over 200 yards. How about how was that experience for you as a younger younger player? Uh, I think it was awesome. I mean, I enjoyed OU. Um, 
you know, through my career and obviously you guys starting that package for me, being able to get on the field and get my feet wet. And then, uh, you know, even look at the O-line and fullbacks that are in front of me. I mean, still people ask, man, that was such a cool package. Well, it was, but, you know, you had guys like Gabe Center and Donald yeah. Stevenson, Lane Johnson, Trey Millard, uh, right. Aaron Ripkowski, and I know I'm missing guys up front, but listen, I just had to run over a safety or try to beat a guy that was kind of filling up. So <laughs> I just put my 250-pound self on him and – we just try to get yep. in the end zone. <laughs> well, well, after the bell dozer, now comes your 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 starting in two thousand and thirteen, right? Your 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 win at Notre Dame has has to be one of your mo- more favorite moments at OU. Oh, easily, and we still talk about it with my dad. And just growing up at uh, going to Bishop Carroll Catholic High School, and right. mom always wanted me to go to Notre Dame until you know I got that offer, and she's like, "Yeah, that's a little far from home." <laughs> yeah. So. It- um, but yeah, definitely going there was was special and running out and and seeing that crowd. Um, that was that was pretty sweet. Yeah, you don't get an opportunity to play Notre Dame very often, and I got to tell you, for me as a coach, it's one of my more favorite uh, favorite moments. I I grew up in a Catholic high school as well, and uh, it's only a four and a half hour ride from my hometown, so I had a million people there for the game. And uh, yeah, you had a special. Any any part of the game that's more special to you, you, you're thinking back on it, you had a big game. Yeah, that. so I always – let's see, because I think I got um, – I went down. I want to say I had to go back in and get an IV, and I'll never forget them ripping that IV and said, are you ready to go back in? So I was like, yeah. Well, I was running out of the tunnel, I'll never forget. I kind of felt like Rudy running back out there, you know, thank you, going back and watching the movie. Um, but, yeah, that was, that was special, throwing the – Let's see, to the Colton Bester in the end zone. Um, I think yep. Sterling Shepard had that little shallow route that he took to the house. So when you got guys like that that can catch a little five, ten yard route and and crib it for you, that makes your uh, job a little easier too. Now, absolutely. Now, moving on from that season, you're back and forth. I know we're with Trevor Knight some, and you're in this with with also Kendall Thompson. Uh, I believe it's Kendall, right? I get all yep. the. the- there's so many Thompson boys, I get them mixed up. But yeah, no. but but now we and now here we bring you off the bench in the fourth quarter, last drive to win the game at Oklahoma State. Talk about that experience and what's going through your mind. I remember looking at you, asking you, "You ready for this?" And you're like, smiled like you always do. You got <laughs> big, your eyes looked at me and said, "Yeah, I'm ready." So talk about that 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 whole you know drive and and you know what you're thinking yeah I mean with the like you said Trevor coming in and and starting and so yeah Yeah. so I was just trying to stay ready that week not getting that many reps but uh I knew when coach Hyde came over and said hey you ready to go and I'm like well let's do it and uh it was a cold game never forget going down there and I was like we just need to get the drive started somehow you know get that first first down and um we had some great plays made like I said I think I went to Shep First couple plays, Brennan Clay had a nice little um, play down the sideline there. And then I'll never forget, I think you can correct me if I'm wrong. It was like a trips right. Uh, was it under white oh, corner? Yeah, yeah. Well, under white yeah, corner. Absolutely. And Jalen Saunders was in at the Y. Yeah. Absolutely. And you put a perfect ball on him. He ran a great route. And, uh, and uh, man, we went nuts. And because uh, oh. it was our first offensive touchdown of the game. That's right. Yeah. Remember, we had Jalen Saunders had already returned the punt for a TD. I knew we had a fake field goal. Garrett Botham threw to, uh, <laughs> to um, oh gosh. And, and, oh, uh, Honeycutt. Yeah, to, to Michael, to Honeycutt. And uh, I remember Michael, when we practiced that on that Friday, we put it in on Friday. I said, no, honey, I said, when you're running in there, don't get blown up and fumbled, you know, let the ball get out, you know? So he goes, coach, I'll be the one blowing them up. And (laughs) and you see the play, he gets destroyed. And luckily he's already in the end zone and the ball goes flying. (laughs) But anyhow, I remember thinking three points isn't going to be enough. I I knew we were struggling to score touchdowns. and, And fortunately we had that play in. But then finally, we get that offensive touchdown to win the game, and uh, what a, what a special time, you know! And end up going to the Sugar Bowl. Yeah. And uh, anyhow, now then from there we convert you to a tight end. 
And again, I'm like, this guy is too much of a team player. He's been here for four years, now five. We have got to find a home for him and, and get him on the field. And sure enough, you are open to it. And you got the size. You're you're a little bit over 6'6", six, six, right? right? 255. Yep. You still weigh the same, 255 or so? Yeah, about 260, plain weight, fluctuate. Yeah, but. That's what I thought. But anyway, so you're all for it. And and I thought with his dad and uncle, the way the way they play, and I said, sure he can do this. And shoot, you you took you took to it like and it, how how about how was that whole feeling for you getting moved? And but well, you wanted think, to be moved because you thought, hey, I want to be on the field. Yeah, and today's and, world today's world you'd have transferred and played quarterback and you never had an NFL career. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, you know, after talking to you guys and you guys were up for it. It was weird. It's just, you know, my dad played tight end. So I'm like, maybe right. this is maybe this is what I got to do. And getting up at 6 a.m., hitting the sled in the indoor with Coach Joe John, which is it's yep. awesome seeing him over there now as well. And um, Absolutely. You know, just trying to get better and better because I think playing quarterback, you know, the coverages and fronts, all that stuff, you know, it, it helps out with that. But what you can't do is get down in a three-point stance and block a, a DN. You know, that takes a little time and, and uh, right. reps. So. Um, it was definitely different, but, you know, I always say I wish I would have done it a little earlier. Um, I right. loved playing quarterback and loved every minute, but, you know, I always saw other guys transferring out and going somewhere else. But like you said, I'm just an OU guy through and through. I wanted to stay. I didn't want to leave. And uh, I'm just glad I could, could play tight end in that last year. And, and fortunately, yeah, we found the right home for you. You were all for it. And uh, you end up. Uh, the fourth round draft pick. Uh, I, I saw something that was reading up on you. Uh, you coming out of college, you were the seventh highest rated uh, tight end in the whole country. So, right? Pretty, yeah, pretty wild. Just I think through um, just training and getting some good film out that last year, it kind of helped me out. And then going into the combine and going to the East West game and just being able to show some scouts, just athletic ability. And, you know, I had yep. put a lot of time into blocking. So I was trying to show them I right. could do that as well. And, uh, yeah, it's just funny how everything happens. And next thing you know, you, you know, going to San Francisco and that's Fourth full circle as well. San Francisco, right? Yeah. Right. And two years in San Francisco. And then you go to a bunch of one year, you go to the Vikings, Jaguars, Kansas City. Uh-oh, they shut the lights off on me. <laughs> one, one second. There we go. There we go. I hadn't moved it. Guts on a sensor, but uh, <laughs> and then so Kansas City, you win your first Super Bowl, and then the Cowboys for a year. How was that when you jump around from year to year for four years? How how hard was that? Yeah, it was tough. The, the first two years with uh, Coach Tom Sula. Uh, drafted me there and then he got fired and uh, Chip Kelly came in for a year then he got fired and that's when they brought Shanahan and uh, John Lynch in so you know I had three head coaches and two GMs in those three years and uh, yeah. then they brought in a guy named George Kittle when I got released yeah. so that makes sense you know <laughs> George is a heck of a player so you know my <laughs> relationship with George too yeah absolutely um, yeah but yeah, so that was great. And then moving on to um, KC and all of a sudden winning the Super Bowl and kind of finding my my uh, you know niche there with Coach Reed's done a great job of you know putting me in a good uh, spot, good good blocking guy. Um, whether whether it's run blocking, pass blocking, I'm not getting you know that many throws. There's a guy named uh, Travis Kelsey over there, so that makes sense. Uh, right. But it's been great. And then went to Dallas for that year. Um, and then came back, you know, I just realized that Chiefs was kind of where I wanted to be. And I was oh. lucky enough to get another opportunity there and, and uh, been there right. since. So You've had three years there now. Uh, you won one ring a few years ago and then two here in the last few years. Talk about uh, your first experience at the Super Bowl or how it's changed now that you're a veteran Super Bowl winner. <laughs> how is it? How is it different? <laughs> how is it different this year? Well, I think this year was was pretty special just because the road we went, you know, we had a lot of ups and downs this season um, with winning it last year. Like coach always says, you know, you got that target on your back. You're going to get everyone's best shot. Um, so we lost some games that one on Christmas to the Raiders and 
you know, we had to make a decision. We're either going to fight and try to make a run at it or shut it down. And I think the guys, we peaked at the right time. Um, yeah. Going into the playoffs, went on the road, beat a good Bills team, and then going to Baltimore and beating a good Baltimore team and then going to the Super Bowl. So this one was really special. Last year was uh, had the hip surgery, so I was kind of out most of the year, played a couple times. Um, didn't suit up for that one, but that's still special. I was there with the all the yeah. guys celebrating. And then um, the one in Miami, the first one in 19, was obviously special just because that was the first Super Bowl that I'd been to. And, sure. um you know, like I told you, all the media stuff and everything right. frenzy during the week is it's pretty insane. Well, I'm I'm hopeful to get Creed Humphrey on tomorrow. Talk about our our fellow Sooner, our our boy Creed Humphrey and the character he is. I know you can't uh, he, say everything. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> he's uh, he's one of the best he, in the yeah. locker room on the field. I mean, you talk about a guy. You take a picture of him. That's a center right there. Yep. And uh, you and know, just watching one. and a big one. Watching his grit and uh, just how mean he is on the field. You know, he's such a nice guy when you talk to him off the field. But, man, he, when he turns that mean on, oh, yeah. uh, he's, a bully. he's dumping dudes. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Now, how about uh, you don't have to give away any secrets, but it got to be a, a fun going to meetings every day with, Tra with Travis Kelsey. Oh, it's the best. A guy that's played that long. And uh, I still tell everyone, you know, his his knowledge of the game is is, is – unreal um you know he can sit in there and you know coach might say something about you know what do you see on this route and and you know what are you going to do and travis is going to break it down and say well i'm not going to run it this way i'm going to run it this way because you know he he understands it and him and pat have been doing it for a long time and wow. he can find zones uh he knows how to get open against man it's it's special yeah no doubt uh, now have you met taylor swift i'm sure you have yeah, actually got a chance to meet her. Um, that was great, but what a what a ride that was this year with with oh, all that going on and um, good for them. It was, it was awesome. I'm not I'm no hater. I'm I'm all for uh, for him. I thought good for him, good for her, whatever. Exactly. Yeah, that, that's bad. Well, you've played nine seasons. I think people don't know how bad your injury was a year ago, and I was worried. I'm like, yeah, that's your eighth year. And you ripped your whole uh, – what What what'd you tear off the bone? <laughs> yeah, I tore my quad, kind of where it connects up there to the hip. I tore it off the bone. And, uh, you know, I felt it on the field. It felt like I I just got shot and I could barely right. walk and, uh, you know, come off the field, got an MRI the next day. And, yep, so they, they got it fixed up and was out most of the year, which that's – anytime you're on IR, that's always tough. You know, you got to right. try to dig deep and, and find a reason when you're going in there to, you know – stay positive and everything, but we got through it and made it back just for a couple games. Like I said, um, that, which that was good and kind of just, it kind of nagged at me, but this off season, I did a lot of mobility and stretching, just making sure that that was good to go and, um, tap on wood, but this season was, was great and had no issues with it. Yeah, that's great. And you, uh, you finished nine seasons going on 10. How's your body feel? How, how many more you got in you? You think? You know, I'm, I'm feeling good right now. Uh, you know, some of the guys, we always laugh. You know, you ask us mid-season, well, how many more you got? And you're like, I don't know. This might be it. <laughs> but, Until uh, it's over. Yeah. Exactly. Or uh, or like my dad says, just keep going one more until they boot you out. <laughs> well, heck yeah, man. You might as well. Finish with finish here with uh, talk about your, your, your wife. And you have uh, a, a, a one daughter, right? With a, yep. Go ahead. We, uh, so yeah, my wife, Lindsay, and, uh, we got a baby girl. She's 17 months. Her name's Brindley and we got one on the way due in, uh, April. And, uh, I'm going to be a girl dad, another girl. So I'm going to have two girls and, um, hopefully one of these times I can get a boy, but right now I, I love it. I love being a girl dad. That's awesome. And you're packing up to go back to Norman for a while, right? Yeah, we're going to pack up, um, kind of be back and forth. She's got some uh, doctor's appointments in KC, so we'll be back and forth. Yeah, but, uh, yeah we're going to get, I think, get the spot moved here in uh, Norman, and we'll see where we're at next. Maybe buy a spot yeah. in KC, and uh, yeah. we'll go from there. But um, Well, when I get finished with my uh, rent, uh, my Arlington Renegades, I'll see you at Belmar. I know go. I always run into you out on the golf course. So I'll have to play with you. Absolutely. Yeah, we got to get around in for sure. <laughs> All right, Blake. Well, hey, I thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, helping your old ball coach out. You're you're kind to do it. I love it. I appreciate you having me on, Coach Stoops.
All right, Blake. All the best, buddy. Appreciate you. That wraps up this installment of Conversations with Coach. Follow and subscribe to this channel and visit selloutcrowd.com to find out about upcoming programs.